Justin Miller, Oxnard College Physics. Here we go. So we're gonna do some problems involving inclined planes. And let's just get started here. So, <clears throat> here's the problem. Okay, we've got ourselves an inclined plane with an angle of inclination of 65 degrees. And we're gonna go ahead and put a 2.5 kilogram mass on that incline and ask some questions about well, what happens when we let go. So we can draw out a little picture of this. 65 degrees, maybe something like that. Maybe not exact, but that's okay. Theta initial is, not initial, excuse me, theta so incline is 65 degrees. We'll go ahead and put a mass up here. There's our mass. Our mass has a mass of 2.50 kilograms, and its initial velocity is zero. The initial is equal to zero. It's released from rest at t equals zero. And we want to know things like, hey, what's the normal force acting on as it slides down the incline? And what's its acceleration? And how fast is it going after it slides a certain distance? And then we kind of go on from there. So before we get started with actually quantifying things, let's just go ahead and draw in some pertinent information. A little force diagram. What are the forces acting on this object? So when it's right here, <clears throat> it says it's a frictionless incline. We haven't done any friction anyway yet. We've got ourselves the perpendicular component of the gravitational force, Fg perpendicular hat. We've got the parallel component of the gravitational force, Fg parallel hat. And we've got ourselves <clears throat> the, um, that should be a little bit bigger, maybe not scaled out so grandly. There we go. And then we've also got ourselves the, what's all my pins at? Also got ourselves the normal force acting. Just a lack of that. And here we go. Let's make this a little bit smaller. Alright, so, that happens to make this small too. Oh man, I'm trying to make things look too nice sometimes. Anyways, there we go. We've got these two forces, one of them result in the parallel and perpendicular components. And the first question is, hey, what is the normal force acting as this object slides down the incline? So we let go of it, it starts sliding down, right? The normal force is a force that is perpendicular to the incline. So let's consider the force is perpendicular to the incline. We've got ourselves the net force perpendicular to the incline produces the acceleration of the mass perpendicular to the incline, which has to be equal to zero because this object isn't accelerating up or accelerating down perpendicular. It's not happening. There's no motion perpendicular. So if we've got that, and then we've also got the the net force perpendicular to the incline is composed of well, the normal force plus the perpendicular component of the gravitational force. So this plus this must be equal to a zero. And hat plus Fg perpendicular hat must be equal to zero. Thus we have that n hat is equal to negative Fg perpendicular hat. Equal magnitudes, opposite directions. The negative sign just says, hey, they're opposing one another. One's perpendicular down, the other perpendicular up. We want to know what is the normal force? Well, we can just go ahead and say that the magnitude of the normal force is equal then to the magnitude of the perpendicular component of the gravitational force, which we know already to be mg times the cosine of a theta sub i. So we've got ourselves then that the magnitude of the normal force is equal to 2.5 kilograms multiplied by the acceleration of the gravity multiplied by the cosine of a 65 degrees, which gives us the magnitude of the normal force being equal to 2.5 times 9.8 times cosine of 65, 10.354, 10.354 newtons. We could say up perpendicular if we want, but the normal force is pretty well um, understood to be 
varying the weight of the object pressing against it. So there we go. We'll give ourselves the magnitude of the normal force. So whether it's held at rest or whether it's sliding down freely, we've got this will be the normal force. As long as there's no other forces that are pushing down on it or pushing up on it perpendicularly. There we go. So that was a nice part A. We venture onward to a part B. And what we want to know for part B is, well, hey, what is the acceleration of this mass? We let go of it, it starts sliding down the incline. What's its acceleration? So we want a hat is equal to a what? Well, that's going to be parallel to the incline, right? So we've got the net force parallel to the incline produces the acceleration of the mass parallel to the incline. And that acceleration parallel to the incline is the overall acceleration because we've already determined that component of acceleration perpendicular to the incline must be equal to zero. So this is really the overall acceleration. That's exactly what we're interested in. So from this, we've also got that the net force parallel to the incline is the sum of all forces acting parallel to the incline, which is well, just this, the parallel component of the gravitational force, Fg parallel hat. Thus, we must have that Fg parallel hat is equal to Ma parallel hat. All right, well, we already know something about directionality. We let go of this, the object goes down the incline, right? We've got the F G parallel hat and A hat are directed down the incline. So I'm just going to go ahead and utilize a sign convention. This is something that you kind of got to get used to. When we're dealing with inclines, we're going to pick plus means this, minus means this, because again, it's one dimensional motion. So we're going to say, let plus be um, let's say, let's say let plus be the direction down the incline and minus is then up the incline. Right now that doesn't seem to be that important because there's only one force acting but that ends up being very important to be able to make some sign correlation with what's up versus what's down. We make some sign. Plus is down, minus is up. And I'll just go ahead and say this now, I'll say it again later, the direction that the object is moving is best to be the positive direction when we're dealing with inclines. It's just the easiest thing to do. So, <clears throat> I'm just going down the incline, we let down B plus. All right, so what we can do with that is we can get rid of these little vector hat signs. We know the direction of the parallel component of the gravitational acceleration, right? We're trying to figure out what the actual parallel component of the gravitational force. We're trying to figure out the acceleration that's produced. So this is known. We know that this is plus. And well, we can already infer that A is plus too. But now we can say that Fg parallel hat is equal to plus Fg parallel. The plus sign means down the incline. We get rid of the hat sign because now this is just the magnitude. Direction, magnitude. Really, you don't need a plus there because it's, there's no minus there, then it's plus. So we can just call this Fg parallel. The invisible plus sign out in front says that that is directed down the incline. So now we go like this. Fg parallel is equal to m a parallel hat. The reason I'm still leaving the hat on the acceleration is because that's what we're trying to find. So it's best to leave that undetermined at this point. Something that we will find by the overall sign of the end result. So we saw we solve for a parallel hat. A parallel hat will be Fg parallel divided by m. Well, Fg parallel is equal to mg times the sine of theta sub i. That divided by m gives us that a hat parallel is equal to g times the sine of theta sub i. 
well, we can compute this, right? A parallel hat is then equal to G times the sine of 65 degrees, which becomes 9.8 times the sine of the 65 gives me 8.882, we'll call it. 8.882 meters per second squared. The end result came out to be positive, right? What does positive mean? Positive means down the incline. If it would have turned out to be negative, it would say that the acceleration was up the incline. It came out positive. So in terms of the final answer, you don't want to just leave it positive because we really chose that sign convention kind of arbitrarily. We, we chose it. Not everybody's on the same page with, oh, plus means down and minus means up. We could change that around. So in the end, we want to put our answer as a parallel hat is equal to 8.882 meters per second squared magnitude down the incline. Magnitude, direction. Magnitudes are positive. Direction is a clear statement of which way? Down the incline. So there is our overall acceleration of this object. Down the incline. Cool. All right, moving onward with that, we were then asked, hey, what is the speed of the object after it has slid two meters down the incline from where it initially was? So we'll just say that this object goes from here, slides down two meters. And we want to know, hey, how fast is it going when it reaches that position right there? We release it from rest, slides down, how fast is it going? So what do we do? Well, we start off. What do we know about its motion? What don't we know? We know its initial velocity, v initial, is equal to zero. It was initially released from rest. We're trying to figure out how fast it's going after sliding two meters. And, well, that's some displacement that this object undergoes. We're going to call it delta r because it's not a delta x, it's not a delta y. It's a one-dimensional displacement directed down the incline. So let's call it delta r and well, we need to know what that value is. That's two meters, two meters down the incline. I'm still going to keep that down the incline is the positive direction. So I'm just going to call this positive two meters. All right, what else do we know? Well, we know while it's sliding freely down the incline, this acceleration is 8.882. Meters per second squared. Leaving that positive because that is down the incline. So plus equals down the incline. Still. So even in one dimension, you gotta be careful of things, right? One way is positive, one way is negative. So we're leaving positive down the incline. What else is there? Oh yeah, there's some time interval that it slides down that two meters. I'm not really asked about that. I'm more interested in that V final right there. Well, because this object is constrained to move in one dimension, we can just utilize the equations of motion for constant acceleration in one dimension. We can rewrite them slightly, and we can write ourselves that V final squared is equal to V initial squared plus 2A delta R. Here we go. What is A? Well, A is this. What is delta R? Delta R is that. What is V initial? V initial is that. We can figure out what V final is based upon how far it slid under the acceleration that it's undergoing. So we've got ourselves a V final is equal to the square root of 0 plus 2A delta R, which is then equal to, you put a plus or minus there, plus or minus the square root of 2 times 8.882 meters per second squared multiplied by 2 meters, which gives us a V final being equal to Square root of 4 times 0 0.82. 5.96. 5.960. 5.960 meters per second squared. 
Should it be positive or negative in terms of a velocity? It really just asks for the speed, but in terms of a velocity, we want the sign to correlate with the direction that it's going. This would be positive because it's going down the incline. Or we can just put that over here. Down the incline. All right. So that's all fantastic, right? Seems pretty straightforward. Yeah, for the most part, not much going on with this. Just gravity and the normal force. What happens if there's more than that going on, though? Whew. So now we take this. We take the same system here and say that after it slid for two meters under the acceleration of 8.882 meters per second squared, obtaining a speed of 5.960 meters per second squared, we're going to start to apply a force to it. A force directed up the incline such that it's going to come to a stop over a time interval of 0 0.75 seconds. So you say, well, what the heck's going on now? Well, think about this, right? We could take some incline here. And, ooh, I can take something that's about 2.5 kilograms. I got some big masses in here. Another one right here. Anyway, maybe not exactly 2.5 kilograms. I'm not going to hold this at 65 degrees because I don't want to hurt myself. But we can have it slide at some distance, right? And I can start applying a force to it right here after it slides, let's say, scale two meters. What's going to happen? Is it just going to stop at my hand? It depends how hard I push upward on it when it reaches my hand, right? So if I just want to bring it to a stop over a certain time interval, then there's a certain force I need to apply directed up the incline when it reaches my hand. So it slides down, and there, I stopped it over a certain time, right? See that? My hand was initially right here, and what happened by the time it stopped? My hand was down here. Why? Ouch, that kind of hurt a little bit, pinched my hand. That's okay, because, well, I exerted some force that had to produce the acceleration necessary to change its velocity from 5.960 meters per second as it reached my hand to zero over 0 0.75 seconds. So it's still moving. It just got something else going on with it. So now we've got an entirely different system. We've still got the incline and the mass sliding, but we're adding an additional force into the mix. So let us redraw this and really be very aware of what we have. All right, so with respect to this new system, we're going to assume all this other stuff's already happened. This object has slid for that two meters from its initial position. We've got the angle. This doesn't look like 65 degrees, but yeah, that's okay. We'll just say this is 65 degrees. Not the best 65 degrees I've ever seen, but we'll say that the object's here, right? Object's here now. There's the mass. But right when it's right here, its speed, V, is equal to 5.960 meters per second. And that is going down. And that is going to be its initial velocity as it's right here. Well, over some distance, and time, this object's gonna to come to a stop. So, sometime later, this object will be here. We'll have moved some distance, but this is gonna be 0 0.75 seconds later. The object, the final, is at rest. Does that make sense? So, what do we need? in order to make that happen. Let's look at the forces that are acting on this object. We've still got the normal force and the gravitational force perpendicular to the plane, F G perpendicular hat. We already know that those are gonna cancel each other out. So we're not adding in any other forces that are perpendicular to the incline. We're adding in another force that's directed up the incline, right? So we've got that there is the gravitational force directed down the incline. Fg parallel hat. And now we're going to add in another force that is directed up the incline. Where you want to draw it doesn't really matter. I could say that there's a force pushing it with an arrow that way, 
or something that's like this, but we want some notion that there's another force acting on it directed up the incline, and we'll name it F applied, or F sub APP. So, what do we have here? We want to know what is that force? So this is a part C. A, B, C. Yeah, no, D. D. My mistake. D. So we've got F applied hat is equal to what? Well, again, all of the motions constrained to being parallel to the incline. So that's a good place to look. The net force parallel to the incline produces the acceleration of the mass parallel to the incline. What is the net force parallel to the incline composed of? Well, let's see. The net force parallel to the incline is composed of these two forces, FG parallel and F applied, hat, hat. FG parallel hat plus F applied hat. So this is what we've got now. From these two, net force produces, net force is composed of, we can write that F G parallel hat plus F applied hat produces the acceleration of the mass like that. So that's where we want to, to sort of delve into and examine, right? If I want to know what F applied is, I need to know two things here. I need to know what this term is, and I need to know what this term is here. So the question is, do we know those two terms? Well, this parallel component of the gravitational force is directed down the incline, in the other direction, as a magnitude of mg sine theta. This we do know. We know what the mass is, 2.5 kilograms. Do we know what the acceleration is? Not yet. It's not going to be 8.882 meters per second squared anymore because that's when it was freely going down the incline. We're changing its acceleration. We're changing its motion from what it was previously changing in a different way. So we need to figure out what A parallel is now. What is A hat parallel now? We can think about something. This object sliding down, increasing its speed as it slides down until it gets right here. And then we're going to slow it down. So if the object's still moving downward but slowing down due to this force pushing up, the direction of the acceleration must be opposing its velocity, right? Velocity is down, it's slowing down, the acceleration better be up then. So that's something just to think about. So what can we do to get this acceleration? Well, what do we know? We know this. We know that V initial, when we first start applying the force, is 5.960 meters per second squared. We'll say that down is still positive. Down equals plus. We have that V final is going to be equal to zero. It comes to a stop. We know that there's some acceleration. That's what we want to figure out. And we know the time interval over which this change in velocity occurred is 0 0.75 seconds. And then there's also some distance that the object traverses over that time interval and coming to a stop. So, the question is, can we figure out what A is from this? Yeah, we know three of the five things here. This is still assuming a constant force here. Constant applied force produces a constant acceleration. So how are we going to get this? Well, we've got this. V final is equal to AT plus V initial. So let's solve for A here. A is going to be equal to V final minus V initial divided by T, which is then 0 minus 5.5. 960 meters per second divided by 0 0.75 seconds, which gives us an acceleration of 5.96 divided by 0.75. Put a negative sign out there. We've got negative 7.947, we'll call it. It's negative 7.947 meters per second squared. That's the acceleration. Notice that it came out to be negative. Why? Because we said the positive is down. This was positive. That means it was initially traveling downward. So acceleration is in the opposite direction of its velocity. 
That's what we already assumed had to be the case. And indeed, we were treated that. Make sure that things make sense sign-wise. It's really easy to get mixed up on signs. Always try to go back and make sense of things. They're easy to drop or misinterpret. But they're just as easy to think about and make sense of if you take the time to do so. All right, so we've got the acceleration now, right? Well, that's this right there in terms of well, a magnitude and a direction. So we're going to still stick with the fact that we're calling down the positive direction and up the negatives. And we want to solve this out for f applied here. So I'm going to take this expression here, move the fg parallel hat to go to the other side, and write that f applied hat is equal to m a hat minus fg parallel hat. Still, down equals plus, up equals minus for directions of these pertinent vectors here. This, we already know the direction. It's told that it's up, but this is what we're trying to solve for. So we don't want to force it. We know that this now has to be well, up the incline, negative. This is down the incline, positive. So we can get rid of those vector hat signs and put in the sign correlation regarding them. That is to say that A is then equal to our negative 7.947 meters per second squared. The negative says up the incline. And FG parallel is going to be equal to, you said it's down the incline, right? Got positive mg times the sine of theta sub i. Positive because that component is directed down the incline. So we can put this stuff in now and get ourselves f applied hat it is equal to, we've got 2.5 kilograms multiplied by a, which is negative 7.947 meters per second squared minus mg times the sine of theta, well, we've got ourselves m is 2.5 kilograms times g times the sine of a 65 degrees. I want to throw another frag on that. Sorry for getting in the mix there. But anyways, let's solve this out, right? So we've got 2.5 times negative and then minus that quantity there. So we'll try 2.5 times negative 7.947 minus 2.5 times 9.8 times the sine of 65. Negative 42.07. Negative 42.072. Newtons. What does negative mean? Negative means up. So our final answer here would be that F applied hat is equal to magnitude of 42.072 newtons directed up the incline. Sign came out to naturally tell us the correct direction. So you pick a sign convention, you stick with it, and result, if it's a vector you're solving for, gives you the correct correlation with what the outcome should be. That takes a little getting used to, but that's it. If we want to stop it faster, we need a larger force. We want to stop it over a greater time, we need a lesser force. But we need this force to stop it in 0.75 seconds. Last part was E, how far does it slide in that time? And going from here to here, what is this distance? Delta R. So that's actually pretty easy to get because we know the initial velocity, we know the time it takes, and we know the acceleration. And we know that it comes to rest after that 0.75 seconds.
you know, the acceleration, we've already gotten that by knowing what the net force was. We computed it right here. So we've got a couple different ways that we could go about solving this out. This is now known. Negative 7.947 meters per second squared. And you know what? Let's just go ahead and do it. We could have ourselves that uh, V final squared is equal to V initial squared plus 2A delta R. And we could go ahead and solve that for delta r here. We get ourselves that delta r must then be equal to uh, v final squared minus v initial squared divided by 2a, which is then equal to well, v final zero minus v initial was this 5.960. How fast it's going after it slid the two meters down. 5.960 meters per second quantity squared divided by two times negative 7.947, 7.947 meters per second squared. And see the negative signs are gonna cancel out there. Delta R should be positive because we said down the incline was the positive direction. That is indeed going to be the case. We get 5.96 squared divided by two times 7.947, two times 7.947. And we get about 2.235, we'll call it 2.235 meters. 2.235 meters down the incline. That's how far it moves, I'm coming to a stop. We have to bring it from 5.960 to rest over a time of 0 0.57 seconds. It moved during that time, and that's how far. So, we have a cool problem, it involves lots of little bits and pieces, kind of switch up the system in between and uh, break things apart. Hey, this is what we do. Solve things out, figure things out, given certain scenarios. So the main point with all of this is Newton's second law, right? It gives us the ability to deduce a lot of information. You have to be able to understand the system though. If you just want to say, oh, what equation do I use? You're done got to understand the system and every system has its own little intricacies so if this is just the beginning but there isn't actually an end well it gets to the semester anyways that'll be that for now we'll do some more problems with inclines and wish you all a great day be well <laughs>